In a few moments' time, some of the pupils from St. Patrick's College will carry a cross up the center aisle of St. Patrick's Cathedral here in Armagh. Having just read the account of the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, we will soon focus on the cross itself, the wood of the cross, on which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, let us adore. I'm conscious that this afternoon marks the 25th anniversary of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement. These young people weren't even born in 1998. So they and the generation of young people before them have no recollection of the terrible violence which brought so much destruction, bloodshed, grief and trauma into our communities. And thank God that today's young people don't have that experience. This Easter, I thank God also for all of the lives and livelihoods that have been saved because of the agreement. And also for the architects of the agreement, the people who met for many, many hours and days in order to put it together and who took such risks for our peace, often making political compromises. I'm literally just back from the Stormont Assembly buildings where there was a gathering to mark this very significant moment. And I have to say, I had mixed emotions there this afternoon. First of all, as I've said, that great gratitude for the peace that was won in 1998. But also sadness as I reflected on the many, many people who died or who were injured during our troubles. And I also have to say that I'd sadness too because even though we've made so much progress in ending the hostilities here, we remain a divided people, separated by distrust, sectarianism, intimidation, and we're unable to govern ourselves in any normal, sustained manner and for any reasonable length of time. I think we must all share some responsibility that the agreement's vision of a peaceful and reconciled society for our children and grandchildren has not yet been accomplished. We haven't yet found a way of healing the awful wounds of the past or of maintaining positive relationships both on this island and between these islands. I'm very conscious about what St. Paul writes about our crucified and risen Saviour. He says, all things are to be reconciled through him and for him, everything in heaven and everything on earth, when he made peace by his death on the cross. Christ is our peace. The late Pope Benedict once beautifully pointed out that Christ does not conquer through the sword, but through the cross. He wins by conquering hatred. He wins through the force of his greater love. The cross of Christ expresses his no to violence. And in this way, The cross is God's victory sign, which anoints us Jesus' new way. The one who suffered was stronger than the ones who exercised power and violence over him. In his self-giving on the cross, Christ conquered violence. Christians, therefore, should always be people of peace people who recognize and live the mystery of the cross as a mystery of reconciliation. The work of reconciliation is compulsory for Christians. 
Reconciliation wasn't an optional extra in the gospel message. It was a core value and was the essence of the teaching of Jesus. And that means that to leave sectarianism and bigotry and hatred and violence unchecked, especially when it's between Christians, is a grave scandal. Christians believe that by his cross, Christ Jesus himself accomplished peace. He broke down the dividing walls between us, the hostility between us. He reconciled us to God in one body through the cross. And if you think of the cross with the two arms out, expressing love and reconciliation from the world, and also pointing upwards to God, showing that our reconciliation is with God our Father. And that is why this afternoon, during this solemn ceremony of the cross on Good Friday, and also in the coming joy and hopeful Easter celebrations, I'll be praying that the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday agreement might be a catalyst for greater engagement by all of us in the unfinished work of peace, in the unfinished work of healing and reconciliation here.